Here we are going live from Macedonia, from the office of Redact in the old town of Tallinn. We, and today we are talking about how to use gamification in your exhibition booth. I hope, uh, I hope it, it brings all value to you. Uh, but before I continue with my presentation and talk more about gamification marketing, I want to talk more about myself. So who am I? As you already know by the information and uh, the information on the poster and on the LinkedIn event, my name is Mike Smedaleina and I am ADEX Customer Success Manager. Happy to be part of this uh, small team in Estonia uh, for a year now. And I've had, had to work with clients from all, all across the globe, from Italy, Germany, UK, to Baltics, to the Eastern part, some Indian guys, uh, some guys in US and Canada as well. And I'm, I'm just loving this job. It's been amazing. I've seen what I've seen the cre creative side of all the marketing specialists and salesperson who have created the games. And to be honest, I have been amazed. At first, when I joined the act, uh, I was kind of like skeptical since I knew that gamification marketing is only about, all right, I'll buy something from the store shelves and then register my check. And that's it. But usually I didn't want to do it. It was boring for me. It took a lot of time and effort to actually do it. But now once I got introduced to the world of gamification marketing in online, then my mind was just blown. It was just blown for the results that every each other campaign has brought. And I've been, I'm so happy that I've got to be the part of those campaigns being so successful. And also I'm happy to be part of this team. And what I do on my free time, I have my own marketing agency. So the, this experience from my own marketing agency has been so helpful for me to help adapt clients uh, and the other companies to actually build their, their games, their, build better the games, make it more about the people and the content that is in there. And I've just got to have, the, have, have had the opportunity to share my experience and my knowledge with them. I, like I mentioned, I'm a singer as well. So I sing a little uh, vocal group with uh, five other guys. We're kind, kind of famous in Estonia, but that's not important right now. And otherwise, I'm just a decent lad. Uh, right in the lowest, uh, lowest section, you can see some of our clients who have made some gamification uh, campaigns for their exhibitions, actually, ex exhibition booths then. But... Uh, what do we talk about? Uh, me, it's not important. We are here to talk about ACT, a software. Like, I don't like to say software. I like to say a life-saving tool about it. It's a life-saving tool. It saves a lot of time. And you can build your own campaign in minutes, literally minutes, and, and then later on prove it to, to you as well. And without writing a single line of code. You don't believe me, but trust me, you'll be amazed when I show you everything. So uh, about gamification. I don't know how, how many of you actually know what gamification marketing is about, or overall gamification, but today we are talking about how you can use it in conferences and events in addition to marketing and HR purposes. So there are some fundamentals to gamification. Uh, overall, it's like using game elements in the non-game gaming context, but uh, what the key points are, are the emotions, what uh, and this emotion is what these campaigns bring up. And these little elements, gaming elements, like uh, the risk element, you have to risk, uh, you have to make certain decisions in a short period of time to be successful. Uh, you can have video games uh, that tell a different story. You can have public leaderboards, so you compete with other per people all across the globe. You have different challenges, points and badges that all trigger, like I mentioned, mo emotions. Emotions like happiness. Uh, they bring the adrenaline rush. They just bring the joy of the experience. And all this experience and all these emotions help to keep the focus on the game itself compared to like a regular social media that usually you scroll through on your mobile phone and you don't pay attention maybe out of your habit of liking everything, you just dub double click on the post and you like it, but what's the worth in there? 
you, okay, in, in we marketers then look at the data, we see, oh, we got an impression, someone engaged with the post, okay, but it was just an automatic click. There was no real value in there, except uh, compared to gamification marketing, there's actually some real value. People spend a lot of time playing those games, uh, seriously, a lot of time. Recently, uh, one of our clients, an uh, egg producer called Ego in Estonia, launched their campaign. One of their most active players played a single match three or so-called Candy Crush game uh, for three hours. So, no, sorry, not three hours. Uh, she played the game for 5,000 times in a three-week period. I calculate it was around like maybe 70 hours a week that she engaged in the company's ads, in the company's campaign. It, it is like, no, I haven't seen any such kind of results from any other marketing campaign all across the globe. Okay, Coca-Cola had an amazing campaign where you had to like share Coke, but some other online basic ads and campaigns, none has such engagement. And usually people remember those campaigns for a year or two after the campaign has finished. You'll talk, oh, you'll ask, do you remember this game? Oh yeah, some this company did something like that a couple of years ago. Talk about the engagement. And uh, what about this? That you keep that emotions keep so focused on the game itself. And the good part about gamification is that you can ask for feed. You can use it for different purposes. And since the person who is engaging with the content is so engaged with it. They, they just can't focus on anything else. They will give you valuable feedback and they will remember a lot, a lot more compared to other marketing campaigns. For example, leaving feedback. You can ask, uh, they can leave you feedback. For example, yeah, create a Tinder game, a swipe poll game. You ask for diff their opinions on different stuff. You can educate with them on, with simple trivia or motivate to purchase them by giving them prizes or discount codes, codes with the Wheel of Fortune or just create a game for pure entertainment purposes, as some companies might use in an exhibition to engage the people. Or you can also collect leads with the campaigns as well, which is, as we all know, is very useful in exhibitions since you want to know who you're selling your product later to. And uh, so the reason now that we know what gamification marketing is all about is the reason why we are all here how to gamify your exhibition booth. So there are, like, I like to say that there are four steps to gamification marketing. Uh, not, not to gamification marketing, but uh, more exactly like to how to gamify your booth. Uh, yeah, how to gamify your booth in an exhibition. So first of all, you need to set goals. Then you need to brainstorm some content. Then you need to, of course, sell like crazy since you need to promote your game to get players playing. And then later on, you can analyze the game and all the results with a couple of in the matter of minutes compared to paper raffles where you, it might take you hours, for example. So let's get to the first step, the exhibition of these objects and the goals of your booth. Uh, before you even start to create the game, uh, the process works like backwards. Usually people think, oh, let's create this game and see where we're going. No, no, no. Uh, first of all, think that what is the goal of your exhibition booth. What is your booth strategy? And what, what's the role that your, the games are playing in your conference booth? Are you trying to collect as many leads as possible? Are you trying to just raffle out products? Are you just trying to engage people or share the game with a wide audience on a big event to just entertain them? It's, all those little things matter when you start building the game itself. You need to have like a clear path or like the objective why you are at the exhibition, why you want to do this game and what value it has for you. Uh, for example, uh, we, well, when we went to RigaCon last year, uh, we used our own game at uh, like a presentation when uh, we spoke at like did a 15 minute presentation and we had about 300 people listening. Uh, of course, Usually you don't get their emails, contact information. Maybe some of them come to your booth or catch up later on a LinkedIn or which, what, whichever site to get to know you more and ask more about it. But what we did, we, we used our own game. We 
put it on the slideshow. And in the meantime, as we were talking about the presentation, uh, it was like a quick feedback game or like a quick drip the game. And everyone in this audience left their emails address. So we got to speak about the engagement marketing, gamification marketing to about 300 people. We got their uh, emails and contact information so we could talk to them later on after the event and connect with them even more. And they just had fun. And it was a memorable experience, memorable speech compared to other presentations who had just the presentation and tried to talk for it. I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind that approach as well, but I think it's more fun with, uh, if you have a game ready on your hand. So the first ob objective was to have a goal, have a reason why you're going there. And then is the second most important part. <clears throat> you need to have great content. The content that fits your brand, fits your goal. For example, if you have, uh, you're going to a food exhibition, uh, you want, you have different taste tests and you want to get people's feedback and actually save it to later analyze it. You may, for example, create a Tinder swipe game. So you have different tastes, different packages, for example, like a uh, Latvian chip company, uh, Adagio late, uh, recently just created. Uh, this game was an okay marketing campaign, but they got 18,000 votes for, uh, to choose the best tasting chip, what they should bring back on the market. And you, can, you could use the same approach in your exhibition booth. You could uh, have them taste something and then later on answer on, your, on their mobile phones which product they like the most. Then you may have battle. For example, at start of the day, we used battle game. So we pretty much like chooses, uh, gives you an option between, uh, between two companies and then you can choose which one you would rather invest into, pretty much. So you have to choose one. Later on, we could see the results, and which start was the best. It was uh, actually a pretty fun game. And then we had an HR Expo in Estonia, had a Jeopardy game where we were, we were talking about gamification, marketing, not marketing, gamification in HR purposes as well. So we just invited people to play the game and participate in this experience rather than just attacking them with a sales pitch. That's why ADACT is the best, why gamification is so great. We didn't care about that. We just wanted to have like a great experience for everyone. So uh, like I already brought you some real life examples, some examples from the content. I don't, I don't want to bring some examples from like, uh, just talk about game types. I want to bring you real life examples, how you can implement in uh, gamification in your exhibition booth to uh, based on other real life stories. So for example, Coca-Cola uh, uh, created a game, actually two games that were connected e to each other. One of them was a drop game uh, where you have to catch falling things. And the other one was a Wheel of Fortune. They were all both connected. So uh, when they arrived to the booth, they were given a tablet. And when they played the game, finished the game, they finished with this, some kind of score. Then if they reached uh, across the certain threshold, they were redirected to a Wheel of Fortune to raffle them out different prizes, whether it was Coca-Cola drinks and juices or water. That was the goal of their booth. Uh, and the booth was surrounded on the idea of using games. Everything was surrounded by that. It didn't have any like additional extra fun value, but it was the main goal. So, and what they used to actually promote their stuff and stand out from the rest was, were digital screens and the game itself. So people who played the game on the iPad could actually, and could play this case, uh, sorry, tongue twisters, could play the game on their iPad. And as others were walking by them, they were seeing, oh, there, there's a person playing a game in there. I have to go and check it out. So in seven hours, they got around 250, 200 players who played the game and got some prizes compared to usual exhibitions where when you get 100 or 150 visitors, it's all right. But they got 200 plus visitors in seven hours from one day. Another example is a Flappy Bird, a game everyone knows probably. This is a sensational game that broke the internet some years ago. And actually Moon Cascade, the software company, uh, used the same game type to promote their platform. So they also had an iPad, like you can see on the picture, 
where a person was playing the game on their tablet, you know, iPad, and all the ones who passed by, they could see what they were playing. Since they could see what they were playing, they were, oh, I should join in. And we could see from the event, and we asked for a feedback, that uh, they said uh, some people, actually a lot of them, came back even more, even more, even more to visit the booth to see where they are placed, what's the score, uh, did they win the prize that they were uh, supposed to get. And their prize currently was uh, iPhone. I don't remember what, which model, but uh, they raffled out an iPhone to, to the participants in the top five or top three, something like that. And uh, now imagine, okay, you're at the booth, you just visit one booth one time, you talk with them, all right, see you, see you later, I'll go see other booths. But if you have a game that invites you back to games and it's a raffle amongst who finish in the top 10, for example, you have to come back. And it's, I can say it's guaranteed that you will remember the booth that you've returned over to over and over again, since it creates a memory. It, it, attach, it brings, back, brings the person back, creates a, creates a better relationship with the company and the people that are working there. I think that's one of the most important parts about it being at the exhibition just uh, to, so people can remember you after the event, since there are a lot of, a lot of different companies at the exhibition. Another example from the start of the, from last year as well, uh, is Astrobaltics, who created a hoop game. Uh, they actually, it's li li literally hoop game, you just throw the ball in a hoop. But uh, what's interesting about their use of this game is that they had a big digital screen and they bought like a piece of uh, cardboard that is designed to be, look like a mobile phone. They wrapped it around the less screen. So people who were working by saw that's a giant phone already caught their attention. They stepped step forward, started to play the game. And so everyone else who walked by saw that someone is playing on a giant phone, just swiping and playing and showing themselves. The salesperson who were there didn't even have to do a sales pitch since it was just so attractive. People came to engage with their company, with their booth by itself. So, and also they collected leads while the game was there. So later on, when they even didn't have time to talk to everyone, they got their data and they could just send emails or connect with them later on after the event. Another ex, uh, ex, like example how you could use at events, exhibitions, or parties even, is uh, how Karma VC created their game. It's uh, like a, a RSVP campaign uh, and that asked uh, whether you are coming to uh, office opening party, pretty much. Uh, and they used our platform for it. So when they clicked on, yes, I'm attending, they were presented with a series of questions since it was like a special themed event, pretty much. And since they answered the question, there was a, a registration form as well to capture leads and collect them. Uh, later on, when they took out the analytic file, they could see who were joining the event, who were coming actually. They didn't have to send like a basic email. They didn't have to send a letter or ask around, are you coming, are you coming, are you coming? No, they just did a game. It was fun. It was different compared to everything else. And they got all the information that they needed and they could later analyze it in a couple of minutes, pretty much. And another example, I just, it's another example that Ninja Casino is probably gonna use uh, later on in the Wheel of the 90s event. But I'd like actually love to recreate the example for you and show you also around the act and how you can literally create a game in minutes. I'll, I'll challenge, I'll even challenge myself. It will take me probably like five minutes, I, I might say, to create a similar looking game as you can see here on the screen. And keep in mind that our keywords are, we have, it's a We Love the 90s event, so it's 90s themed game. What better game to choose as a bubble shooter? Uh, so of course, we want to collect leads so we can uh, send emails and communicate with the participants later on or send them information about what they want as a, as a prizes. Uh, we want the game to be engaging, to gain as much of uh, reach on, at the event as possible. And it also needs to be as simple as enough so 
uh, older people and younger people, everyone can join in and play the game. So let's take a look at the game itself and the DAX platform. So that's the look when you log into the DAX platform. Uh, let's head on and create our first campaign. So Adapt has over 40 different game types to choose from, and we are currently developing also a couple of new ones as well. So uh, we have questionnaires, competitive games, we have puzzles, lottery games, and video games. But for now, since I want to create the similar game as I showed you, uh, you have to search for bubble shooter that is under competitive games. When you click on it, it here opens up the campaign editor. Uh, already we can see how the game works. We can try it out and play ourselves. But uh, let's, since I challenged myself to do it in five minutes, I have almost three minutes left to actually build the game from the purpose of this event. So I have, what I have here, I have gathered some pictures, some icons to do it faster since I don't uh, want to spend a lot of time right now actually designing those icons or finding them on Google. So what do I need to do? I click on the image, image upload, and pretty much just drag and drop, upload, and do the same stuff here with the other icons. Sorry, I opened up the picture. Upload another icon, quickly add this. And the last one as well, as you can see, I'm already messing up everything since I'm pressured by the time. time. And now imagine I'm playing the game as well. As you can see, uh, now the game's already coming together. It looks very similar to experience. I spent like maybe 60 seconds to add the icons in here. And now let's change the look of the campaign itself. Here we can see the landing page, which we can edit as well. But for now, I want to add a background to the campaign. I'll just, again, search the campaign background on the left, go to image upload, drag background, and voila, here I have it. And if I check out how the game should look like, it took me, what it took me? A uh, minute and a half, probably, to create a similar looking game for myself and for the event, for the company. And now imagine that usually it takes a month or two to do all the planning, to hire developers, to hire designers, and project manager, and to coordinate everything. And also, usually it's quite expensive. We all know developer salaries, we know project manager designer salaries. They don't charge like small sums. And compared to that, uh, it usually takes like a month or two to actually develop the game. With the deck, I literally created the game in, what is, what is it now, two minutes. Uh, the game is ready. What do you need to do now? I can just change the text. Uh, welcome to uh, Ninda Casino, uh, Bubble shoot, uh, Shooter Game out of the element already made. I, I want to change the picture to look more like Ninja Casino. So I'll add the logo here. And the game already looks pretty great, already like a nin real Ninja Casino game. And so that's like a perfect example how I just spent like three minutes to create a campaign now from start. We have the start stream, we can gather leads here. We have the game, and on the end screen, we can redirect them to our homepage, thank them for participating, or whatever other goal we are currently choosing for our booth. Uh, just to share with you another game, let's uh, actually recreate Coca-Cola's Wheel of Fortune game, just to show you how a lottery game can be created, also in, couple, in a matter of minutes. So we have the game here, ready, ready to go. We have the wheel visuals. I'll uh, actually add this wheel image, make it a little bit shorter for you. So here's the wheel background, change the size of it. 
I'll add a different arrow icon. Game already starts to take the look of Coca-Cola. And where's the background? Backgrounds, backgrounds. Let's add the background picture. And we're almost ready to go. As simple as that. Now, only thing and a couple of things that I need to do are some, some editing, some final touches that may take a little bit more time. But uh, I almost have a game ready, ready to go. I have on the game section, I have wheel sectors that represent the prizes that my players may get. I can set up the prizes from an act itself. I can set them as insta win prizes. I can set them as raffles. Well, for a wheel of fortune, it's usually just like uh, insta win prizes. Uh, but uh, I can send also automated emails to all the winners who got there. Since I'm gathering leads, I have their email information as well. And so it saves the time to set up uh, some additional emails in Smiley or MailChimp or whatever emailing software you are currently using. Also, we have integrations. So let's say you have a landing page that you also want to share uh, in addition to uh, the actual digital screen or mobile device or laptop that you are using in the exhibition booth. You can use, uh, you can embed a campaign with a couple lines of code, literally just let's take the iframe one. I changed the size to, let's say 700. The code change here, I copy paste it to the web page and that's it. That's, it's literally that easy. I, and it again took me like four minutes to set up the campaign and the game. And uh, let's say I wanna, I, I'm at international events. I wanna share the game like in a couple of languages. Of, of course, English is the main one, but let's say we are at an event in uh, France. So I'll just in one uh, little, one just one, one click, I'll translate the whole campaign to French. I'll create the campaign. And here we go. Game looks like the same, of course, since it's the game. We go to campaign and we can see everything was translated in a matter of seconds. Everything, every little element within the game was translated to French directly. And now from the start screen, uh, we have translation element that we can use. So, late, so we can use one screen and whatever the uh, mother tongue of the language, or whatever the language is that the player speaks, they can choose whether to play the game in English or in their local language. It's up to them and they can do it all from one side. They don't have to change it between laptops, iPads, or find another game. So everyone can join in, literally everyone can join in. Uh, I got a question uh, from Laura uh, before I talk about a little strategy how to get players to continue to answer you. Uh, how expensive is the platform in its lowest tier? Uh, in its lowest tier, uh, our price usually varies, depends uh, of your goal and the account limits, but the prices start from around uh, 800 to 1,000 euros for one game. But it, like I said, it, top, it all depends on your goal and end goal and how many leads or gameplays are you going to gather since your price is based on consumption. Uh, Stefan also asks, can the user create icons relevant to their brand or products? Uh, yeah, uh, you can, but uh, the icons need to be designed outside of a deck and you can just drag and drop them inside the campaign in, like, like I already showed you. Uh, and I are just asking you, am I going too fast? Uh, do you have any, any other questions? If you have, if I didn't mention anything, uh, then just speak up. Uh, come on for the price part. It, the price starts from 800 to 1,000 euros for one campaign, but uh, it's like the lowest price since it, everything depends on your end goal and the consumption of your campaign. 
can Alinas, can we connect leads to CRM? Uh, yeah, you can. We have, luckily, we have developed a lot within the last three years. We have been active. Uh, perfect example, we're inside the campaign. We want to send data. So when the client gets the information from yeah, the player, inserts the information to the registration form, we then the data is automatically sent to CRM. You can use our section called uh, integrations. Uh, okay, this is the embedded part, but under connector campaign, you can send the data directly to HubSpot, MailChimp. You can use Zapier to send to your CRM. You can use scripts or even our own API. But to, in order to do that, we need to have a discussion between your and our developers to set it up perfectly. I hope I answered uh, all the qu questions so far. So uh, in the meantime, as I think might be thinking on new questions, I'll move on to the, my last slide called sell like crazy. And I mean, literally, I have seen, uh, so I've been to exhibitions, I've seen many salespersons just sitting on their chairs, just scrolling through their mobile phone and not paying attention, but what's the point of the salesperson being there? you should sell, you should promote the game. So for example, what I like about gamification is that uh, you can uh, literally change the message that you are sending to your uh, exhibition visitor. Uh, you can, uh, what you can do is uh, instead of saying, hey, uh, are you interested in this, that, 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 that. Instead of this boring, boring, boring speech uh, that we have heard numerous times from cold calls of the telecom companies uh, call to us or just going to exhibitions or saying the direct sales uh, like persons in malls. Uh, instead of that, you can just invite them to play a game. Like, uh, for example, we did, we did that at Starter Day. And here's an example of a roll-up banner that we used to get people playing uh, our game. Uh, so on the right here, you can see it. Uh, it's a, we put the code, uh, like URL link on the QR codes, and we just approach people and, hey, uh, come and play, play a game, win the prize. Like going to fair, it's not, it's not, uh, you, we didn't attack them by sales pitch. We just wanted them to play a game and that's it pretty much. And then we got their data from there. We sent them out automatically an email after finishing the game. And already communication started. They got an experience. They got a prize and everything went wonderfully. We got around 200 and 100 to from 150 uh, leads to 200 leads within two days. And uh, like I said, uh, we were testing the game out, but it worked wonderfully. Uh, we also tested this approach at Rigacon uh, on a marketing exhibition. And we got like 500 leads within two days using the same approach. We didn't just sit in our booth. We walked around, uh, stepped outside of our booth. We invited people in from all across the like, walking corridors, uh, asked them to play the game. We didn't ask anything else. We didn't, they didn't want, they didn't want, okay. But it's up to them if they wanna win the prize or not, if they wanna play a game or not. We didn't act them, attack them by a sales pitch. But uh, what's the key part? Uh, I would like to bring out uh, two key parts in this uh, thing. Uh, we didn't attack them by a sales pitch, and we also got them engaged in our content, in our brands, because everything, every game that we used was branded according to an act. Uh, we used uh, Facebook icons to, to, like, to speak to marketers, and yeah. The game worked really well. People really enjoyed it. After the event, uh, we got, yeah, uh, about 5,500 unique leads, but we took a look at the gameplays. Each person, each visitor played the game around three times, and but they played at least once in our booth. So it's already pretty good engagement, and it shows that they played the game and they gave with the brand outside of the one booth experience. They played it a couple of times in some other place. Uh, I act, and that's like the main recommendation I have for you. And that's it from me for now. 
and like I like to say, success doesn't come to you. You go to it. So go. So do your salesperson who are exhibition booth. They invite players to play the game. They don't adapt with the sales pitch. And if you want to learn more about gamification marketing, about adapt, or if you want to actually like uh, discuss some ideas, brainstorm some ideas, then you can book a meeting with me, and we can go on from there and have a chat. Uh, now I saw a question that, uh, who asked it? Uh, Alexandra Makano, uh, you, sorry, if I pronounced it incorrectly, uh, you asked about uh, how long it takes to prepare a game for ex exhibition. Uh, usually, uh, <laughs> it's a funny story. Uh, it takes up to 30 minutes to a day, pretty much, usually. Uh, I have done, uh, I had a, a client in Rigacom who approached a booth and didn't believe that it's actually possible to create a, a campaign or like a game in 30 minutes. Uh, I agreed, we agreed on a time to meet, meet them at the booth and I sat him down and I actually did, I created the game like I showed you the Wheel of Fortune game. I created it in two languages in 30 minutes and they were amazed. And we also had a client uh, who just purchased a license uh, without our like, sudden attention or knowledge and they launched their gamification marketing campaign in one day. And the next day, like, like we saw the purchase license, we just thought, okay, now they're planning, looking around, but they just built the game in one day, promoted it, and they got around 150,000 gameplays from a single campaign that they built in a day. Just sound, <laughs> sounds unbelievable. I know, right? But it really is. So they had 5,000 people playing the game and they played it together of two, almost 200,000 times altogether. So on average, each, each person played approximately like 38 uh, 0.7 times and the game completion was 99.14% bounce rate was 9% sounds pretty mind-blowing to me and let's take into account average gameplay time was 61 seconds so like one minute and on average each each player played the game for 30 minutes <laughs> I didn't believe those results when I saw them uh, but they are real, we checked, there are no hackers. These are real people playing the real campaign game. And this, this result could be your next game when you're sh uh, sharing it at your exhibition, when you're promoting it there. You could have up to 100, 200, to 1,000 or even more participants playing and the game. So, yeah. Uh, Kalev already, thanks for being so active in the chat. I've been so zoned in on the presentation itself. Uh, it's, it's so intriguing topic for me and I, I really enjoy it. Uh, Kalev has shared with you the link that you can use to actually share uh, what are our campaigns. Uh, you can see what uh, game types we have available. And if you go to our webpage, adact.me, then you can uh, look around all the other uh you can look around all the game types all the case studies we have available on our blog post and we are always uh publishing new blog posts and i recommend to you to follow us on linkedin as well if you don't want to sign up for a deck yet uh for example next week uh, we have such thing called case study tuesday next week's tuesday we will publish a case study uh that uh X, uh, X Infotech, uh, like a, what is it now? Uh, uh, online security company, simply said, uh, needs to implement a game in their exhibition in Malaysia. And they gathered all, also 200 plus leads and they get 200 plus people with their game. So if you want to find out more about that, follow our LinkedIn page. Uh, book a meeting with me. I already have put my meeting uh, calendar link in here and we'll have a look at the campaigns. We'll analyze them together and brainstorm some ideas with you all together in this uh, meeting. 
So one last thing before I sign off from today's webinar, I really want to thank everyone, all of you who participated in this webinar, who joined in. And it's been lovely. I really enjoyed speaking to you with this webinar. And I hope we can share our ideas and brainstorm some ideas soon together. So if you don't have any other questions for me uh, right now, do, you can write them in chat. But if you don't want to do it, you have my email uh, that's written here, mattias.me. You can write to my LinkedIn. It's up to you what you do. And just write to me. And if you don't want to, it's all right. But I wish you all the best. I wish you good luck. And I wish you a wonderful to continue the wonderful journey of gamification marketing. That's it for me. I'll sign off.